Hello everyone, in today's tutorial we will see how to create dynamic content using PHP and MySQL. This will be the first part of a two-part tutorial. In the first part we are going to deal with HTML and CSS to create the front end of a simple shop and in the second part we will create the dynamic content using PHP and MySQL. We are going to create this simple shop that you see on the screen and we are going to create it from scratch. So there will be a lot of things to learn, like how to structure the files and folders, how to highlight the visited page on the navigation menu, writing the CSS, using the description and keywords meta tags to optimize our content for the search engines, and of course, we are going to see the logic behind dynamic content. Now, let me quick explain what we see on the screen so we can start coding. At the top of the page we see the navigation menu and currently we are on the home page. We have two more pages, an about and a contact page. Next we have a simple header. Underneath we have the main content and last we have the footer. The main content is split in two sections. On the left we have the product categories and on the right we have the products. Now as I said this is the home page in which we are displaying a set of four random products. Every time I click on the home button, different products are being displayed. Now, if I click on a category, I will get the products listed in that particular category. And if I click on a product's name, I will see its details. Now, let's see where those data are coming from. I have a database called Our Store, and inside I have a table called Products. The products table has an ID, an image, a title, a price, a description, and a category column. We are going to pull this data from the products table to create our dynamic content. All those images that we have in the image column are stored in a folder in our project so we can fetch them and display them. Okay, enough with the introduction, so let's jump to the code editor and start coding. As I mentioned earlier, we are going to start from scratch. So the only thing that I have in my editor is an empty project folder. And since every website starts with an index file, let's create one. We're going to give the file a PHP extension so we can write PHP code. Next, I'm going to create a basic HTML structure. Let's change the title tag and add two more meta tags. A description and a keywords meta tag. The two meta tags are important for search engines to understand the content of our web page. Next, I'm going to create a link to our style sheet. I will put the style sheet inside a CSS folder. So let's create the folder and the file. Nice. Next, I'm going to create a script tag for our JavaScript file. Again, I will put it in its own folder. Let's create them. First, the JavaScript folder. And then the file. The next thing that I have to do is to structure the page layout. But before that, let's add a short description And a few keywords. Okay, now we are going to create our HTML elements. We are going to create a nav element, a header, a main element, and a footer. That's all the elements that we need to build our layout. Now, so let's start creating the navigation. We will have a div element with a class of brand to display our brand name and a div element with a class of links to put all A tags inside. Our first link is the home page. Now, I will give all links a data attribute and I'm gonna name it active and I will set its value to index. This will help me to highlight the active link using JavaScript. You will see when we get there. Let's create the about link and the contact link. Let's see our links in the browser. 
and here they are. Now let's go to the style sheet and style them. The first thing that I will do in our style sheet is to reset all elements from their default margin and padding. Next I'm going to set some basic rules to the body element. Next I will target the nav element. I will set the display property to grid. This way I will align the brand name and the links next to each other. Next I will use the grid template columns property and I will set the width of the brand name to auto and the width of the links to one fraction. That means that the width of the first column will be as wide as its content and the second column will span the remaining space which is the browser's width. Next I will vertical align the items in the center. I will set a gap between them and I will set the height of the navigation to 70 pixels. I will give the navigation a drop shadow and I will set the position to sticky so the navigation stays at the top when we scroll the page. Next I will set the background color to white and I will set some padding left and right. And we are done with the nav element. Next I will target the brand name. I will make it bigger, bold and give it a bluish color. Next I will target all A tags inside the nav element. I will remove the underline, I will display them as inline block elements and give them some padding. Next I will set a transition effect to the background color to have a smooth animation when we hover over. And I will set the text color and the font size. Next I will set the, the hover and the active effect. I will set the background to a green accent color, the text color to white and a border radius. Now about the active class we are going to use it in the JavaScript file to highlight the visited page link. You will see. Ok, I'm done styling the navigation. Let's see in the browser what we have. Let's reload the page and we have a nice navigation bar. Nice. Now let's go and create the header. We are going to have an H1 element with a greeting and a subtitle with some dummy text. That's it. Let's go and style the header. I will target all elements inside the header. I will set some padding and a light grey background color in the header element. I will leave the H1 element as it is and I will set a margin and a line height to the subtitle. That's it. Let's check it out. And here we have our simple header. Nice. Now let's quick create also a simple footer. Let's go back to the style sheet. And set a dark background color, some padding, the width to 100% and the text color to white. Let's check it out. Nice. Now you see that the footer is right under the header. That is because we have no content yet. Now let's go back to the index file. Before we create the main content we are going to use PHP to create a template so we can use the same page structure throughout our website. I will create a folder named includes and inside that folder I will create three files a nav.php file, a header.php file and a footer.php file. Next I will take the nav element from the index file and I will place it in the nav.php file. I will do the same thing with the header and the footer. Now I have to use the PHP include function to include each file in the place that I want it to show up. First I will include the navigation, then the header and below the main element I will place the footer. Very good. Now if I reload the browser we will see the exact same page layout. Nothing is going to change. Nice. 
Next, I will create the About and the Contact page. I will make a copy of the index file and change the file name to about.php. Now, I will go inside the main element in the About page and I will type this is the About page. Now, I will create the Contact page by copying the About page. I will change the file name to Contact and also the H2 heading. Let's see our pages in the browser. Let's reload. We are in the home page. This is the about page and the contact page. Now we won't put any content in those two pages. So let's go and position the footer at the bottom. Let's fix first the contact page. I am going to open style tags under the page title. I'm going to target the footer and set the position to fixed 0 pixels from the bottom. Now I will copy the whole style element and paste it in the about page. Nice. Let's see this in the browser. Very good. The footer is now placed at the end of the page. Nice. Now let's go back to the index file. Ok, now that we have set up our page structure, let's create the main content. But first, I will bring in my project a folder named Products, where all the product images are stored. Remember that the names of all those images are stored in the database in the image column. Ok, now we are ready to create the main content. I will first hard code the categories and the products and apply the styling and then we are going to make the whole thing dynamic by writing our PHP code. So let's start. I will create two div elements. I will give the first div a class of left and to the second a class of right. Next I will create a section title in each div. On the left we have the products categories and on the right we are going to display the page that we are on, which is the home page. Now I will display the categories in the left div inside A tags. Let's say we have a category named books and a category named games. Nice. Now let's go to the right div and structure the product. Under the section title I will create a div element with a class of product. I will, split, I will split the product in two sections. On the left side we will display the image and on the right side we will display the title, the description and the price. So let's create an image tag in the left div and pick an image name from the products folder. Let's display the coding.jpg image. Nice. Now let's display the products title as a link in the right div element. Let's say coding is fun. Underneath we will display the products description. Let's put in some dummy text. And last we will display the product's price. Nice. Now let's run the file in the browser to see what we have. It looks ugly, but we are going to fix it in a moment. So let's go and apply some styling to our content. We are going to write our main section rules above the footer section. And we are going to start with the main element. But first let me bring the browser in the screen so we can see the CSS code taking effect while we type. Alright, now we can start. So I'm targeting the main element. I will give it a padding of 20 pixels. I will set the display property to grid so I can split the content in two columns. For that, I need to call the grid template columns property and set the width of the left div element to auto and the right div element to one fraction. As you can see in the browser, we have the two div elements side by side. Next, I will set a gap between the two columns and a margin of 30 pixels at the top and the bottom. Next, I'm going to target the section title. I will make the font bigger and I will set a 30 pixel margin at the bottom. Next, I will target the left div element. I will give it a border on the right side and also a padding. 
Next, I will target all A tags that are inside the left div element, which are our category names. So I will display them as block elements. I will remove the underline. I will set the color to a dark gray. I will make the font bigger and I will give the elements a 10 pixel margin at the bottom. Next, I will set the hover effect for the category names, which is a simple underline. Next, I'm going to target the right div element, which, will not, which I will not touch, so I will move to the product element. I will display the product element as grid, so I can split it into two columns. On the left, we have the image, and on the right, we have the text. I'm going to give them a gap of 50 pixels. And also, I'm going to give it a row gap of 50 pixels, because we are going to have more than one product displayed in the page. So I need a gap at the bottom between them. Next, I'm going to target the product's image and give it a height of 150 pixels. And I'm going to display the image as block element. And I'm going to center it in its container. Next, I will target the product's title. I will set the font weight to bold. I will increase the font size. I will remove the underline. I will set the color to dark gray. And I will set the line height to 26 pixels in case that the title will span more than one line. Next, I will set the hover effect of the title to an underline. Next, I will target the description and give it a margin on the top of 10 pixels. And last, I will target the price. I will make it big, give it a margin from the top and a dark red color. And that's it. We are done with the CSS and with the first part of this tutorial. In the next part, we are going to deal with PHP and writing the functions that we need to make our content dynamic. See you in the next video.